I know if you're like me, it can be frustrating to be a PayPal shareholder. But I also know many of us are holding and building up positions because the setup is very similar to Meta. And just look at what Meta has done over the past year. It has been just an absolute beast. So let's get down to the truth, get down to the bottom of, is this a Meta style opportunity or is it not? Because I know a lot of folks are frustrated and you guys need answers on if it's basically you know time to move on or would you be giving up on massive, incredible gains? Just make sure you like the video if you like getting the truth without the hype. Now look, I'll be upfront. There's a lot of nuance with this discussion. You gotta have a lot of background. You gotta have a deep understanding of the fundamentals of investing. And if you need help with any of that, why aren't you a member of the group where we offer free coaching and five free courses for you to learn all of that together so you can get those fundamentals down and understand exactly what opportunity is and be able to exactly delineate, hey, when am I gonna make a lot of money? And when do I need to absolutely pass on that stock? Remember, if you're a member, you get to talk to me anytime you want. You can access me in the Discord where actually, honestly, a lot of our members give a lot of great answers, sometimes even better than the answers that I could give, along with three, four, five videos every week that I release just for the group in there. Use our stock analyzer tool for free. Guys, there's so much in there and so much more coming. I can't get to it all here. Just check out the pinned comment, see if a membership's right for you before the sale ends. All right, so what I did was I kind of thought about this a lot and I just kind of broke this down into three points that to me answer the question of how is this opportunity with PayPal, A, is it an opportunity, and B, is it a meta style opportunity more importantly? So point number one we need to look at is the valuation at the lows. Look, you guys know, I say it all the time on the channel, you gotta understand valuation. You gotta see where that's at in order to kind of understand exactly what's going on with the stock, if it's overvalued, if it's undervalued, whatever the case is. Now, clearly with both of these stocks, they are both severely undervalued. But the question becomes at the lows, how undervalued were they actually, especially when you kind of compare them to each other there. So when you look at Meta, Meta, you know, continue to fall, continue to fall, continue to fall, actually ended up down at a low of around a PE of around eight or nine or so, kind of depending upon whether you take the intraday low or the actual low, doesn't matter. The point was well under 10 was the multiple that you could have gotten Meta for at those lows. That's how utterly crazy ridiculous it was. Basically, and really in terms of everything else going on with the business, it was priced for bankruptcy. Like it was heading in that direction quickly. And I know we've heard a lot of those same narratives around PayPal too, that it's dead. It's a dead company. It's not going anywhere. I understand that. We've heard that from lots of different places, right? But at the lows, PayPal only got down to a multiple of around 14 or so. So as you can see right there, both of them are low. But clearly, Meta was beaten down to just stupid low at that stage. That's one of the reasons why we saw such a big run up in it was because the valuation was just utterly and completely ridiculous. And I know that's exactly why I preach valuation because it just screamed at you easy money from a hundred miles away. Now, was it difficult to buy? Yes. Did I get the entry point right? No, of course not. I went early and I DC weighed my, my way down. Like I do with virtually every single position, it seems I start, I always tend to go a little bit early. It's a ha ha funny joke in the group and such. Um, yeah, you guys can read into why, but it doesn't matter in the end. The point is, is you're never gonna time the bottom anyways. And as Meta continued to fall, the opportunity on the other end got bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's exactly what valuation tells you. That's exactly why I push it so hard. Point number two to consider is the turnaround effort. So we'll start here again with Meta first. And, and to me, this one was quite simple. All Zuck needed to do was get his head out of his butt and figure out what the heck was going on with his business and turn his business around. There was no need to change the business itself on any you know tangible level. All they needed to do was corral in spending, control spending, and figure it out. So basically, needed to lay off a lot of staff because they hired a bunch of people making you know six figures plus, doing absolutely nothing, literally sitting at home doing absolutely nothing. That's how far out of control that got. And of course, all the spending on the metaverse as well. Just hey, you can still spend on the metaverse, but not the stupid crazy amount. Don't spend all the cash that you're making every single month or almost all your cash you're making every single month on the metaverse. Get it back down to a reasonable level. And that's exactly what they did. So the turnaround was actually quite easy to execute to. This was not a difficult turnaround. This was a very easy turnaround to do. Hence why the turnaround was quick and the run-up was equally as quick on the other side as well. They're already crazy profitable. They just had to quit spending so much dumb money and that's exactly what they did. PayPal, unfortunately, is in a very different situation. They are having to change the business itself, the way the business operates and everything going on within, change the products, change the culture, change a lot of different things in there. That is much harder to do because there's no easy levers to pull. There is no, hey, let us just reduce some staff and stop lighting money on fire 
and bang, magically profitability just goes through the roof. Meta had that. That's exactly what they had with PayPal. They've got to figure out how to actually become more profitable through the product. Sure, there are some quick hit, you know, quick wins per se with uh, PayPal. Of course there is. Of course they can cut some staff. They can get rid of some products that weren't profitable. They can do some things, small hit things in the short term, but to have the giant swing in profitability the other way, they don't have any easy mechanisms to pull like Meta did. So again, this is one of those checks in the box for Meta being a much easier turnaround proposition. The turnaround effort for PayPal is much greater. And finally, point number three, probability of turnaround success. Now look, obviously, you know, we know Meta's turnaround was a success, but strip that away. Before we knew it was a success, let's take a look at how it lined up. Now you can like Zuck, you can hate Zuck. I understand both sides of it. But to say he has not let a turnaround in his business before is patently false. To say he does not know how to run a business is patently false. To say he is not able to execute on goals and figure out how to solve massive problems in the business, again, would be completely false. Zuck has successfully pivoted the business multiple times. And let me give you an example here. There was a time when all of Facebook's revenue, almost all of it came from games. Like, you know, I don't know, there was like a farming game, a bunch of other ridiculous stuff like that. And people went, why do we want to own Facebook? I mean, why own that stock whenever, uh, who cares? Some people are going to quit playing these games on, on, on Facebook and that's the only way they can make money. And guess what? Nobody had ever thought of, hey, advertising on these particular sites. Can they blow it up? Can they execute to it? And he absolutely successfully shifted that business from a basically a gaming type business, creating all your revenue from that into an advertising juggernaut, one of the best, if not the best in the world. You can argue them or Google. Those, that's one and two, or one A, one B. However the heck you want to choose it, they are by far and away better than everybody else at it. Nobody is even in the ballpark in regards to bang for your buck for advertising dollars like Google and Facebook are, or Meta, excuse me, like those two companies are. So it seems easy now, but it was a crazy idea that everybody thought he couldn't pull off, and he did. He has repeatedly and successfully created new markets, tapped into other markets, jumped into new business ventures, and had a very, very high level of success with incredible profitability. So when you look at the chances of success for Zuck to turn around, in my mind, when I was looking at that opportunity at the time, it had a very high success rate because of his past track record, which showed he did it repeatedly. Now, likable? Probably not. But that doesn't matter in regards to turning around a business. You do not have to be likable in order to be a great CEO who can turn around a business. And Zuck has proven that over and over and over again. Unfortunately for PayPal, their management team is new and new at this, especially turning around a beast like this. Now I understand that Alex had some great success with other projects he worked on, but he was not the CEO. There is a giant difference between executing as you know one of the heads of many heads within a particular group to help out a business move forward then that is vastly different than being the CEO and trying to execute on something as large and as bulky and as big of a challenge as what PayPal has right now. He does not have a track record like Mark Zuckerberg, and he's not really been in this spot before where he's underneath fire and he's in the hot seat as the CEO. He has never had that tight pressure on him before. So to say the chances of success are the same as Metas, I just can't really go that far. Now, I'm not saying it's a terrible or it's bad or it's impossible or anything else like that. But when we're talking about chances of success at the time of the turnaround, it was definitely, you can definitely see how Meta definitely had a huge, massive leg up on PayPal in regards to that, especially from kind of the C-suite positions. They had a huge, huge advantage there that PayPal does not have. So from what I'm seeing, there are some obvious similarities, but there are some very glaring differences as well. So this is not as good of an opportunity as Meta was. Meta was cheaper. Meta had a much higher chance of success. Meta had more upside and Meta had an easier road in order to have success in the first place. But that doesn't mean PayPal isn't a great opportunity as well. And I honestly, I know everybody does it. That's why I did it. I didn't want to, but this is kind of why I did this comparison because I actually kind of hate comparisons like that because a lot of folks will look at it and go, well, you know, it's not the same opportunity as Meta, so I'm not interested. I'm going to stay away from that. That seems like trouble. That seems like a problem or something like it's going to fail because it's not as good of an opportunity as Meta, whatever the case is. I've heard a lot of different things out there. And to me, Meta success has zero to do with whether or not PayPal is successful or not. Not every opportunity needs to be a meta style opportunity in order for you to make a lot of money. Those type opportunities honestly come along what? 
once a decade or so. That was what I was saying at the time as Meta continued to fall, continued to fall. I was like, guys, you just don't get opportunities like this very often. That's exactly why I was saying that because they don't happen very often, but you don't wait another decade for that next Meta style opportunity. It's not how investing works. So for me, when I look at the opportunity there with PayPal, I want to be invested because I see a massive opportunity there. Now, when I say that, I don't mean it's gonna 5X over the next year like Meta's done for me. Not at all, I'm not saying that at all. But even if PayPal just does 50% over the next year, year and a half or so, that's an incredible return, guys. The market returns eight to 10% on average, and I don't need to get a 5X in order to be very, very happy with my investment. Heck, if PayPal just returns 20% this year, that's an incredible turnaround and a very nice first leg on this journey to where I think it's going long-term as they continue to execute and turn around the business. Now, if they don't execute quarter in and quarter out, we got a whole different discussion here and it's going to be a long road. But if you're telling me that PayPal might very well finally get off the snide here and run up to 80 bucks or so by the end of the year, I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna be a very happy shareholder in the end if that happens. And if you need help with any of that, why aren't you a member of the group where we offer free coaching and five free courses for you to learn all of that together so you can get those fundamentals down and understand exactly what opportunity is and be able to exactly delineate, hey, when am I gonna make a lot of money and when do I need to absolutely pass on that stock? Remember, if you're a member, you get to talk to me anytime you want. You can access me in the Discord where actually, honestly, a lot of our members give a lot of great answers, sometimes even better than the answers that I could give, along with three, four, five videos every week that I release just for the group in there. Use our stock analyzer tool for free. Guys, there's so much in there and so much more coming. I can't get to it all here. Just check out the pinned comment, see if a membership's right for you before the sale ends. And click right here if you wanna see exactly what I'm buying in this market and click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.